Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to show you how you can change stitch colours and colour sort using Embrilliance Essentials. So I've opened a new blank page in Embrilliance Essentials and just before I go any further because I know somebody is bound to ask, I've changed the background of my colour in Embrilliance Essentials to white from the default yellow. So if you want to know how to do that you come up to the yellow properties preferences box you find under environment this may be closed you may have to open it yours may be a plus if you're on windows i think mac use arrows so under environment you come to grid settings here you can change the spacing within the grid i've got mine set at one inch apart and here is where you can change the colour. So this would normally be yellow. You would select the colour box. Now on a Mac, mine opens up like this and sometimes you'll see it in pencil format. And I just chose white. Your colour properties, however, whatever system you use will show up and that's where you change it. Once you've changed it, you need to make sure you click apply and then OK. And then that way, when you close out of your Embrilliance Essentials, the next time you come to use it, it will be a white background. Now, the other thing I've got set as default is my hoop size. So I am now using an Innovis Brother V5LE, which is a combined sewing and embroidery machine. And my biggest hoop is 8 by 12 so again within the properties I've set my hoop size so again you would come up here and under environment you'll find hoops I've set my default as PES now because I'm obviously using a brother machine rather than the previous machine which was a Janome and I've scrolled down and I've found the, the hoop that I want to set as default and again you would click apply and OK so Today I'm going to be using a free stitch file that I got off the internet but I want to change the colour of the stitches. I don't want to use as many colours. So I'm going to come up to open and I'm going to navigate to where I've got my file saved and I'm just going to work my way through until I find it and I'm going to be using the 5 by 7 stitch file and it's showing me a little preview down here and this is the one and it's telling me there's 10 colours it's just over 14 and a half thousand stitches and the size of it so I'm going to say open and that's going to drop it onto my hoop the first thing I'm going to do is just drag an imaginary box around it which then opens up the properties pane over here on the right hand side and I'm going to come up to the rotate arrows and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise because I want it in this orientation in my hoop. If you don't see all these, these properties and colour charts in your Embrilliance Essentials, if you come up to the top of the page where it says view and then scroll to manage views and then just make sure that all these have got a tick against them. If you untick say the properties now this has disappeared so just make sure in manage views you've got everything ticked okay so you can see here that i'm just here is in pink four is in black and there's all these different colors and it said there was 10 colors and again it shows you down here so i want to change the colors so that i know the color of thread to load into the machine i'm not particularly bothered about a manufacturer or a specific number I just want to change them so for instance I'm going to put my words in blue so I'm going to choose a blue and the word dessert I want in the same blue okay so I'm just going to show you how you can change them so over here are all the steps within this design again if you can't see this if it if it just shows up like this you need to click on either the arrow if you're using a Mac or if it's Windows it might be a plus sign but whichever way once you select what's here in this very top left hand corner it should open up all the steps and then if you click on each individual step it will highlight over here 
in the window what you've clicked on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the words. So I'm going to find I'm just here within this window, which is here. And I want to change that to blue. So I'm going to click on its colour swatch. I've got colour selected. I'm on threads. You could change it by palette. So if you click on palette, it will only bring up the colours that are being used in this design. So I'm just going to change it to threads and I'm going to search blue and hit go. And it should bring up anything with blue in the name. So I'm just going to choose, I'm going to try and find a turquoisey blue. I'll use sky blue and I'll say okay. So that's now changed, I'm just here, into sky blue. Now I want the dessert in the same colour. This is all grouped as well. So when I'm clicking, no matter what I click on, it's going to put a bounding box around everything. So I'm going to come over to the window over here and find the word dessert. And I'm going to make sure it's changed to the exact same description of the previous one. So the previous one was Brother Embroidery 019 Sky Blue. This just says Sky Blue, but I want to make sure it's the same. So I'm going to choose it from the window here. It's already selected because it's the last one I've used. And I'm going to say OK. So I've now got I'm just here and dessert in the same colour blue. And then I want to change these arrows on the bottom, but I'll do that in a little while. So the word for, I need to find the word for now, and I'm going to select that, and that's going to be in a grey colour. So again, I'm going to choose the colour swatch, and I'm going to type the word grey, and he either hit enter on the keyboard or go. So I'm going to change it to this pale grey. So it's 817 grey and say OK. Then for my pie, I'm going to use a creamy colour. So again, I'm going to click on the colour swatch and I'm going to type cream and see if anything comes up. So we've got beige, that will do. So I'm going to choose beige and say OK. So that's now changed the pie element to beige. The crust section is down as russet brown. I'm going to leave that because that's the only element of the design I'm going to use, I think, in that colour for now. And then I'm going to click on the next section, which is down as Brother Embroidery White. So I'm going to leave that. So now I just need to come back to the arrows. So I need to come up to the top and choose the first arrows. So I'm going to make the first arrows this 019 sky blue. So I'm going to select the swatch and then I can come in here and I can type the number and put go and it should bring up sky blue and say OK. So this first and last arrow are now going to be the same as these words. I'm going to choose the next set of arrows and I'm going to change them to white. Under colour, I'm going to type white, 001 polar white. So we'll say OK. In fact, I might make that um, cream on the top the same while I'm here. So I'll come to this one, click on the colour swatch, and under number, I'll type 001, because I know that's what the polar white is I've just chosen. So I've got blue, white, the next arrow down, I'm going to use the grey, which was 817 grey, which I used for the word for here. So 817, so now I know the number, I can choose the number selector and say go. And that's highlighted down here and say OK. So we've got blue, white, grey. And then the last one, I'm going to use the beige that I used for the pie, and that's 843. So again, I'm clicking on the colour swatch. I'll go to number and I'll type in 843 and say go, and that's chosen the beige and say OK. So I've restricted the colours now, but what I want to do, if you look in this, I'll just make this a bit smaller. If you look in this colour window here, all these colours will all sew in this order. I want all the blue to sew together, I want all the white to sew together, all the cream. So I'm going to select everything by dragging an imaginary box around it, or you can, if I just click away, you can click on the 
actual total design, which is the first thing at the top. And I'm going to come up to utility, which is right at the top of the screen. And I'm going to come to color sort. And it's saying to me the design page has been reduced by four colors. I'm going to leave everything else as it is here. So all these here. And I'm going to say you can either do new view or save it. I'm just going to go save it and I'm going to call it dessert sorted five by seven and I've got PES down here as my default because I'm using brother so it will automatically give it a dot PES extension and I'm going to save it on my desktop so I know where it is because I'm going to open it again in a minute and show you. So I'm going to go to save. So now if I come over here to the top left hand corner and choose new page and open and go to my desktop and find my file I've just saved as dessert sorted five by seven. You can see it here now all the colours have been changed. This is how it's going to look and if I open it and select it and then if I come up to the stitch simulator up here that looks like a needle and thread you'll see now that all the colours are together so as I start to stitch it through you'll see it's stitching all the blue elements then it's going to go to the next elements and to the cream for the pie and the crust and then although I've used white it knows to put the cream as the last element because the cream has to be on top of the pie. So and Brilliance has worked all that out for me. So that's how it's going to stitch out. So that's how you choose and sort colours using M Brilliance Essentials. I'm going to stitch it out. Okay, so just before I send this over to the machine, just for anybody that doesn't know, I've loaded a USB stick into my computer and it's showing up here. Now mine just automatically shows on my desktop. I use a Mac. You may have to go, if you're using Windows, you may have to go to my computer and look for your removable disk. I'm just going to double click to open up my embroidery USB drive and I'm going to drag the file that you've seen me say from Embrilliance, this dessert sorted 5x7, into or onto this USB stick. So it's now on the stick so that when I go over to the sewing machine I can retrieve it and stitch it out. So I'm going to close that and then you have to eject the USB stick, you can't just pull it out of your machine. So for me I right click and choose eject embroidery because that's the name I've given to this USB stick and then I have to wait for it to disappear off the screen. Once it's disappeared I can take the USB stick out of the back of my computer and it's now on the stick. Now, it doesn't move on, a, on my Mac, it doesn't move the original file onto the USB. It kind of makes a copy of it. So I've still got this original file. So I can then save this into my embroidery file on my computer. So if I go to my documents and embroidery and then go into sayings and look for the dessert folder and look for the PES folder, I can then drag that into the folder which is on my computer. So I've got it saved in different places now. So it's on the USB stick so I can stitch it out, but I've also got it saved in the folder with the original file that I got from the internet as an amended stitch file, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the sewing machine, load this in and start to stitch this out. Okay, so I've got the USB stick loaded into the side of my sewing machine and I'm going to call up the design and get it ready on the screen. I have put the hoop into my sewing machine and I've got tearaway stabiliser in the hoop. I'm going to float the tea towel, which is what I'm going to be using for the design and I'm going to use a wash away stabiliser on the top. Okay, so first of all, because I'm using wash away stabiliser on the top, I'm going to use a basting stitch to hold it down. You don't need to, but this is just, I'm thinking this just might be a little bit easier for me. So because of that, I'm going to go into embroidery edit 
I'm going to go into the USB stick, find my design, which should be the design I made in Embrilliance, which has condensed the colour stitches. I'm going to say set and I'm going to go to embroidery and this little box here with the flower and the dotted line around it is a basting box. So I'm going to select that and that's put a basting box around it. Now within the settings of my machine, which is this, what looks like a piece of paper here, I have made the basting box, I think from memory, 1.5 millimetre from the edge of the design. So I've changed that. You can have it so it hugs the edge of your design. I'd prefer mine to be a little bit away from the stitching. Don't know whether it's going to make it any easier or not to remove it. You know, this is a bit of trial and error. This Innovis V5 LE is a new machine to me, so I'm still learning it. So I've got that. Now, I've printed this design off from Embrilliance, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And as I say, I'm floating my tea towel. Now, one thing I would say, when this design came into Embrilliance, it was rotated. I'm used to having a Janome machine where the arm comes out of the back of the machine. So for me, I've always loaded my hoop up with the bulk of my fabric going off the back of the machine. So what I've seen where a lot of people have this machine where the bed is on like the left hand side of your machine, a lot of people will put their design on their screen so that the bulk of the fabric hangs off to the left. As I say, I'm used to having mine all hanging off the back. It's just the way I work and it might take a while for me to change or to be fair, I'm, I'm, I've got a table here, I've got enough space. I'm still happy to have my you know, bulk of my fabric that I'm not stitching on hanging off the back. Just come back to the design. This is why when I was in Embrilliance, I rotated it so it's this way, because this effectively here is my hoop, the way it is in the machine, and this is the way I want to stitch. So I've got my tea towel here. I folded it in half and I creased it so that I knew where the centre was. So that's up here, and I've folded it in half lengthways. So I've got a crease line from the middle down. And I know roughly I want to put the design here. I'm going to put this into the machine. I can see where that fold line is and that's lining up with the middle of my hoop. And I've printed the design off. I know roughly where I want it. So I'm, I'm just going to move the towel up in the hoop and position this piece of paper, which is my design, roughly where I want it. So I'm thinking about four inches up from the bottom. This printout has got a crosshair in the middle that shows me the center. I've folded it in half so I know I've got where my crease line is. And I know where my crease line is on my tea towel. So I'm just going to use that and position that with some masking tape for now. And I think that's roughly where I'm going to put it on the design. So what I'm going to do now, the center of the design is here where the crosshair is on the design, but I've not got my piece of paper in the center of my hoop. I've got it positioned more down here. So I'm going to use these arrows to bring the needle down until I know where the middle of this piece of paper is. So I'm going to be using these arrows, but I want to try and do it in the hope that you can see the needle moving. So I'm going to press the down arrow and bring the needle down and you can see the design is moving down in the hoop. It just needs to come down a little bit more. I don't actually know whether this is going to work. I've never done this before. I'm just trying it out. It saves messing about trying to line up when you're floating something. I just think it may save time in trying to line up the tea towel onto the hoop and then get it into the machine. So I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to see if it will work better doing it this way. So I'm going to use the arrow to go over to the left slightly. I mean, you know, this is a tea towel. It doesn't have to be absolutely spot on. So I think that's maybe as far as it can go. 
And if I turn the wheel on the side of my machine and bring the needle down, but not going into the paper, I can see that that is more or less center to that crosshair. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to trace the hoop and make sure that it will stitch without, you know, hitting the hoop. Because this tea towel, as I say, is just floated. I'm not using any glue or anything on the back to hold it in place. So I'm going to come to this one now, the one that's got like an arrow and a dotted line. I'm going to select that and it's telling me this key does not operate when the needle is down. Raise the needle. Okay, so let's bring the needle up. Let's try it again. So press this. Okay, so now I should be able to trace the area and hope that the hoop's not going to hit anything at the back and make sure that the needle isn't going to affect any of the hoop. Because as I say, this design is not centred in the hoop. I've centred the design to the tea towel. So it's just going to trace the basting line, basically, because that's the biggest part of the design. The hoop's not hitting anything at the back. Everything looks okay. So I'm going to remove the printout from my tea towel without disturbing the tea towel in the, in the hoop. And then I'm going to bring in my water-soluble stabiliser and slide that in. So now it should be a case of being able to stitch it. So I'm going to close that window now because I've finished working out the basting. Everything seems to be okay. I'm going to put the foot down on my machine. That's turned the light to green. And I'm going to press start and hopefully it's going to baste this piece of water soluble stabilizer down. So I don't have to worry about holding it in place or anything. Okay, so I've used the colour for the basting stitch that I'm going to use on the first part of the design. So now it's just a case of putting the foot down and saying go and it's going to stitch out the blue elements. And if I've done this right in Embrilliance Essentials, it should stitch out anything that's blue now all in one go without having to swap backwards and forwards on colours. So I'm just going to flip you back to the machine. I'm going to put the foot down and I'm going to press start. Okay, so it's done the two blue little arrows at the bottom and now it's moving to the words. And this is because I set it this way in Embrilliance Essentials so that it stitches all one colour at a time. So this is going to take quite some time because it's got quite a few words to stitch out in blue. But once it's stitched out, I'll show you and um, I'll change the colour to the next colour and then I'll show you the finished article at the end.
Okay, so I think my bobbin thread is nearly out. I heard it, it made a funny noise when it was stitching as if the bobbin was rattling. I'm not sure whether this is it or not. So I just thought I'd show you for anybody that's new to machine embroidery. So I've stopped the machine and I've cut the thread and I've just removed the hoop. And I can see on my screen what number stitches I'm up to. So I'm not going to do anything else at all. But if for any reason anything happens, I know where I am in the design. Because I can see my stitches up here. OK, not that I should need it, but because the thread didn't break, I've just stopped the machine. So I'm going to take this bobbin out, which does look as though it's nearly empty. And I'm just going to put a new bobbin in and see if that resolves the noise issue that I heard. I'm going to re-thread it as well, just in case. OK, so I'm just going to put the hoop back in and hopefully we should be good to go. I'm just going to slide the hoop back in from where I stopped the machine. Just make sure everything's out of the way. Put the foot down and start the machine and hopefully it will just carry on. Okay, so that's completed all the blue sections. So it's just a case of me changing the thread now to the next colour and it will complete the rest of the design in colour batches. The only thing it won't do, and this is something I think that it's worked out in Embrilliance Essentials, if I just bring you back to the screen on my sewing machine, I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but the next colour is 001, which is down here. It's the arrows. But I've also got a 001, which is for the cream on top of the pie. But if it stitched this cream on top of the pie now, when it then did the body of the pie and the crust of the pie, that would be on top of the cream and that wouldn't look right. So although I've got a 001, and another one, it's not going to stitch them together. It's the Embrilliance Essentials is intuitive enough to know that when I colour sorted, this particular element here has to be done last. So I'm going to change the thread to 001, then it's going to go to the next number, which is 817, which is the word for. Then it's going to do the rest of it, and then it's going to ask me to change back to white at the end to do that cream on top of the pie. So once the whole design's finished, I'll come back and I'll show you um, because then I need to remove the water soluble stabiliser, the basting stitches, the backing, and then the design will be finished. So it's finished. So as I said, even though I colour sorted in Embrilliance Essentials, it knew that when it stitched the white down here, not to stitch the white on the top of the pie, because that obviously has to be on top of all the other stitching. So that's something that was done in Embrilliance. So now I'm just going to take it out of the hoop.
I can pull out all the basting stitches now. They were there just to hold my water soluble stabiliser, which is this one, in place. And the reason that I use water soluble stabiliser is because on towels and things like this, you don't want to lose your stitches within the pile of your towel. And if you use a stabiliser like this, even though it washes away, it um, holds all your stitching on top of the pile, if that makes sense. So you can take all this out. So I'm just going to rip this all away now. And I'm not going to be too particular about, you know, getting it all out because it is on the back of a tea towel at the end of the day and it probably will all come out in the wash anyway. So I'll get whatever I can get off, but I'm not going to spend hours picking it all out. I'm just going to cut the threads. I'm not cutting the knot. Basting stitch out there. And just pull out as much of this water soluble stabilizer as I can. So now I've just got a spray bottle with some water in and I'm just gonna give it a quick spray over all the front where the water soluble was and that will disintegrate any of the bits that I've not been able to pull out and it literally just dissolves them away which is fantastic so there it is I'm just here for dessert all colour matched in Embrilliance Essentials all stitched out in like colours at a time. So I'll, I'll um, take a close up picture of it and I'll put it in the thumbnail and I'll put it at the end of the video. So I hope you like that project. As I say, it was more about how to colour sort in Embrilliance, but I just thought I'd let you see the final stitch out. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video.